I'm fashion designer Ruby Bandari, and this is Design Your Life. Each episode, we're stitching a happier, more satisfying life for you with insider tips from industry experts. The fashion and lifestyle industry isn't just fabric and thread. Together, we'll learn about setting real goals and growing your look, your soul, and your attitude to make your dreams a reality. Come with me to design your life. Hello, everyone. This is Ruby Bhandari, and this is my podcast show, Design Your Life. And I am so excited to be doing my third podcast just to tell you guys and show you guys something new that I learn every day and every week of my life. So first let's talk about what were we doing at Silk Threads all last week because it's been a really exciting week. So um, I was called as a judge for the senior portfolios at the Art Institute of Dallas and we have some pictures to show you. Um, We had three amazing senior designers that um, had very different concepts and we had to actually guide them and judge them on their confidence, their looks, their con- their concepts, their their overall portfolios. It was really amazing. So there was actually five of us, but two of us actually took pictures, which I loved. Um, I was very, very honored to be chosen again for the third year to do this here in Dallas. Then, um, I am excited to say that I did get the award for Best Designer, South Asian Designer here in Texas from Rehan Siddiqui uh, at the South Asian Empowerment event in Houston, Texas. I had the honor of meeting Shushmita Sen, former Miss Universe and um, one of the biggest Bollywood stars today. She was so elegant and so eloquent and it was such an intellectual evening. I was very, very honored to be part of it. Thank you, Rehan Siddiqui and uh, Texas for recognizing me. And the last thing that we did that was really exciting is Bella Modeling School had their graduation. So for the third year in a row, uh, Silk Threads was able to dress all of the graduating modeling students on Friday night and it was such a success. This was the largest group of graduates that they've ever had. and they actually wore Silk Threads Fusion as well as Indian Ethnic wear on stage um, in front of many agencies and a huge audience, which was great. And of course, the owner of Stella Trevisio, I had to stitch her up right before she went on stage. That was absolutely an adventure. And we're gonna show you a video really soon of me stitching her up minutes, seconds before she had to go on. Anyway, so now I am going to introduce my next guest. I am so excited to have Dr. Richa Mittal here. She is the founder and medical director of Radiant Health Weight Loss and Wellness right here in Frisco, Texas. And we will start talking to Richa right after these messages. Richa, thank you so much for joining me on Design Your Life. It, I had the most amazing breakfast with you yesterday morning, I have to tell you. It was fun. Yeah, it's the best Cafe Brazil experience I have ever had. I, mine too. So, you know, I actually felt like it was such a learning experience for me because I am learning about um, diets and lifestyle um, changes, eating habits every day. And, you know, sitting with you was like, an eye-opener. You always think that you've read so much, you've been on you know, Google, you've um, seen so much on social media, and you think, you know, you, I feel like I'm very knowledgeable, actually. Mm-hmm. And you know, after talking to you, I was like, wow, there's so much more than to meets the eye. And to be able to speak to an actual doctor was um, so great, because you weren't just talking to me in your office, you know, that 15-minute visit, you were talking right. to me on a very personal level about um, something that you're so passionate about. And I'm so excited that you've opened up this um, health and wellness center um, right here in Frisco, Texas. And you know, the first thing I wanna talk to you about is, 
I have a diet that I really like to share with people. I don't know yes. where my diet came from. I call it the Ruby diet, and I've been doing it now um, off and on for about 10 years. Uh -huh. And um, I kind of want to know your opinion on it. Sure. I'd so, be happy to take a look. <laughs> yeah. So if we can get the diet on the screen, I, I, I know you haven't had a chance to look at it, but I'll tell you a little bit about what the diet looks like. Sure. Um, yeah, so there's different like groups. There's mm -hmm. group one, two, three, and four. And each food group is, the first one is fruits, um, the different fruits that you're allowed to eat. Then the second one is your proteins, um, which includes nuts, eggs, cheese, um, meat, fish, uh, and some lentils, like some beans. Uh -huh. And then the third food group, of course, is your vegetables. So the basic vegetables that you can eat. And, you know, um, like carrots is obviously not on it because it's supposed to be more high in calories, I guess. So there's specific veggies that you can eat. And then group four, they call this um, all, the, all the food groups. And then, you know, you can choose. So... Um, the second part of the diet is actually it's a 10 day diet and mm -hmm. you eat a different meal um, according to this every two hours. Okay. So six meals a day and then after the six meals is over you can only have protein if you're still hungry. Okay. So the trick is that I have learned is that you have to eat every two hours and even if it takes you 20 minutes or 30 minutes to eat that meal that means in an hour and a half you still have to eat again. So from the time you started the meal to the time you have to start the next meal, only two hours should pass. So I think it's a little bit hard, but if you prepare all your meals in advance, then you can eat, mm -hmm. you know, then you can eat on the schedule. And I mean, I have things that I actually like to eat on the go, because as you know, I mean, I never have time. So I'm usually eating in the car, or right. I'm eating at an appointment, or just eating right outside the appointment, um, or eating in front of a client. So, you know, I have to make sure that I'm very readily prepared. So, you know, you can see like day one, it tells you your different groups, and you can actually, what I understand is that you can change around the order, but you have to stick to what they're saying, because if I'm not mistaken, you burn uh, your calories or your metabolism works in a particular way when you eat certain things together. Okay. You have a comment about that? I do. So if you pull up uh, the list uh, from earlier and you look at uh, kind of all the different food groups. Yeah, so hold on, we're gonna pull the list. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. so one thing that you'll notice is that there's no processed food on here. So that's something right off the bat that um, is a recommendation that I make to my patients. Anyone who's looking to improve their health, or if they're having issues with their weight, or if they're having problems like developing pre-diabetes or diabetes or something like that, then I, you know, right off the bat would say, cut out processed foods. So what is a processed food? Basically anything that came out of a box, right? So none of these things that you list on here come out of a box. So right off the bat, you get a check mark for that. Um, the other thing, if you notice, is that you're doing fruits, you're doing vegetables, you're doing protein sources, which are um, either plant-based or animal-based. And so basically, you're eating real food, you're not eating processed food. Um, and right off the bat, that makes a huge difference. Um, one thing I will say that one of my personal caveats is I don't use the word diets because diets sometimes indicate kind of a short-term temporary thing in our lives and really your diet or the way you eat every day is a lifestyle. Um, and so if for the most part we're eating a certain way, then when we deviate from that, if we're you know, indulging in some brownies or chocolate cake or something you know, occasionally, that's okay because again, your lifestyle every day is being practiced in that way. Um, about your uh, regimen where you eat kind of every two hours, you know, I, I leave that up to the person because my recommendations typically are that, you know, um, again, it's, it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. But if you're someone who does get hungry, then perhaps you do need to be eating more often. But people can also eat less often and still have success. So is it not true? Okay, so mm -hmm. here, I got some apples, which I love. They're nice and they're crispy. And I have to take a bite. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. You're eating mm. on the job. Yeah. So, for example, today we're at this podcast. Uh-huh. Oh, that's good. And 
you know, I hadn't had a chance to eat. I mean, I had my egg whites in the morning mm -hmm. um, with cheese because I sort of follow this uh, as your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, it's been two hours and I've got to eat at least like two fruits. So I've got some blackberries and some mm -hmm. apples and it says, you know, it says you can have two fruits. Why do they say that you should not have three or four or five fruits together? What's sure, the reason for that? Sure. So, you know, one thing I noticed on here too is that they're grouping the fruits together. And so fruits actually are nature's dessert is kind of how I see it. Um, they do have quite a bit of sugar compared to vegetables. Mm -hmm. But the difference between eating fruit and vegetables and say donuts mm -hmm. is that these foods actually have fiber and fiber helps keep us full. Uh, three things in our diet keep us full, protein, fats, and fiber. Mm -hmm. And so what I tell people is that you'll, you'll notice that after you eat a meal that had one of those three things in it, you're gonna actually feel less hungry than after you have a meal that perhaps didn't and was more high in sugar. And so that's you know something right off the bat that um, just to be aware of. Now, why did they group two fruits and not four fruits? Mm -hmm. Because again, the two fruits already have quite a bit of sugar um, and fiber. Uh, but again, if you were having four fruits at a time, perhaps you're getting more sugar than you really need in that moment. Okay, okay. And then, you know, as far as the protein is concerned, sometimes they'll say to have a protein mm -hmm. and have three vegetables or a protein and one vegetable. And there are different times when you have to do that. So I'll do like a chicken and I'll do lettuce, tomatoes and cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I'll make a little chicken salad. And then sometimes it'll say to do a fruit and a vegetable. And I'll do like lettuce and oranges. Mm -hmm. What is the reason, what is the reason for that? It seems to me that this uh, lifestyle or diet is encouraging you to get lots of fruits and vegetables in your diet. And so, you know, as far as like with your protein, whether you had vegetables and fruit versus if you had, say, tomatoes, which they have listed under vegetables, which really has more sugar than, say, like something like spinach or lettuce. And so, again, I think that that combination and that habit of having fruits and vegetables on your plate along with your protein is probably where that benefit lies rather than the exact combination. Okay, and so, you know, for breakfast, mm -hmm. I've always been in the habit of having egg whites and cheese. Okay. So um, that's just been very staple, and I actually don't put any vegetables in it, except when we were at Cafe Brazil and they didn't bring right. me my mushrooms. <laughs> and then you were forced to. Yes, yeah, so was it, I mean, is it because I mean, does it matter that those vegetables are sauteed in oil? I mean, does that add to your fat or is it better to just have the egg whites and cheese and keep it neat and clean? So actually adding vegetables to your breakfast or to every meal would be really beneficial um, because fiber is, you know, again, the sources of fiber are your vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, foods like that. And most Americans are deficient in fiber in their diet. And so the reason why fiber is important is yes, it keeps us full. Yes, it helps lower our blood sugar and helps our metabolism. But we're finding out more and more that it's actually an essential nutrient for our gut, for you know, decreasing risk of colon cancer, helping digestion, relieving constipation, and even for that gut bacteria that everyone's talking about nowadays, fiber is, a, is what's called a prebiotic, meaning that's what bacteria live on. So adding fruits and vegetables is gonna give you fiber, but also gonna give you vitamins, right? Right. Which, if we can get our vitamins through food, because remember, food is medicine. I think we talked about that yesterday. That's right, food is medicine, That's lifestyle right. is medicine. I That's love that, right. I love that, I'm gonna start using that. <laughs> so you know, my biggest interest in all of this is that I had gained, you know, a huge amount of weight last year, and um, I did this 10 day diet, and I lost seven pounds right off the bat. And since then, I've lost another eight, so I'm down 15 pounds. Okay, good. And so, you know, being at Silk Threads, being on, on podcasts, on stage, speaking, it's pretty, it's pretty intense for me that, you know, mm -hmm. when you're on camera, you gain two sizes. And then, you know, a lot of people, I have brides, I have mother of brides, I have friend, friends and family members that are going to weddings, and they're always asking me, mm -hmm. how did you lose the weight? And so, you know, I have just, Naturally, I said, you know what, I share this diet. I said, I don't know where it came from. And I just tell them, hey, you know, and I show them. So here's another example. I have this mm -hmm. cheese. So it's creamy, spicy, pepper jack 
cheese from Laughing Cow. Awesome. Um, they taste really good. And I think they have 1.5 gram of fat um, in it. And the sugar, the sugar is one gram. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I tell them, I said, just keep, you know, this sort of thing with you and then just keep some nuts. And that's probably the healthiest, the healthiest thing you can do on the go. That's a great snack. Um, and then one thing I'll, I'll, I'll mention, you know, about fat. So uh, through the years, fat kind of got a bad rap, mm -hmm. but all fats aren't created equal. Mm -hmm. And so I'll just say that we don't really need to shy away from fat as long as we're looking at the sources of fat. So yes, limited quantities of cheese, um, you know, meat as a mm -hmm. source of fat is fine. But also you mentioned nuts. So nuts are a great source of what are called unsaturated fats. Uh, like olive oil, avocado, um, those are great additions to our diet. Um, fat, uh, eating fat doesn't really make us gain as much weight as we think. Um, it's actually more the sugar that we eat that is the culprit. Oh, okay, so this, does, this diet is pretty old. I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years, so <laughs> avocado's not in there. So, yeah. the, you know, something I wanted to ask you is, where would I fit avocado into this? So avocado kind of fits under where your nuts were listed. Okay. Uh, because it is a source of fat and fiber. Okay, all right. And, um, you know, I know we talk very medically about being healthy and less sugars and all that, but, you know, what, was, what would you advise as far as, I, I love this diet and I share it with everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mostly my clients. It's all okay. Silk Threads clients that get this. But I share it and, and everybody has, to some extent lost a good amount of weight. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any advice as far as this diet is concerned or maybe doing anything similarly to help people just generally overall um, when they're trying to lose weight? Because I am still, I have maintained that lifestyle, um, I'll call this diet the lifestyle, yes. of trying to eat more often and trying to you know, pair my foods. I try not to eat more than two fruits at once. I try not to eat it more than once a day. Mm -hmm. um, what else can you advise as far as um, losing weight is concerned? Sure, so I would say that right off the bat, this lifestyle is a great option for people who are looking to be healthy um, because again, it cut out all the processed food. Uh, we all underestimate those chips and salsa and margaritas and you know all the other things that kind of add up over time. So uh, one thing that you could add to this lifestyle as far as like long term um, is, your, is your whole grains. So it, it did mention lentils and beans, mm -hmm. which are great sources. But you know, brown rice, um, a little bit of um, you know, quinoa or something like that if someone's looking to, to, to add grains to their diet. So quinoa, again, it's mm -hmm. just come in vogue. Right. Uh, 10 years ago, no one was eating quinoa. Right. So um, quinoa, yes, is a grain, but it's totally, I mean, I guess quinoa could take the place of rice for people who are rice lovers, right? That's right. And, you know, brown rice is an option. And really, I say that you can even have white rice occasionally. As long as your uh, pyramid of your uh, lifestyle is based on these foods, these type of foods, mm -hmm. uh, which are, you know, again, your fats, proteins, uh, veggies, fruit, fiber, nuts, seeds, avocado, olive oil, then yes, we can have rice occasionally. And for our South Asians, I have a lot of patients that, you know, ask me, well, can I still have, you know, rice with my, with my dal, with their, with their lentils? And I say, well, maybe not every meal, but yeah, you know, you, you, you don't want to feel deprived in life, right? Because um, you're less likely to stick to something. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing is being consistent um, sticking with it, making it a lifestyle, and don't deprive yourself. If you want something occasionally, I always tell my patients, don't list any food as a forbidden food. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as soon as something's forbidden, we kind of think about it more. Mm -hmm. And, and then that's we're, what you want. Yep, and then we're more likely to say, well, oh, well, I blew my diet, so let me just go ahead and eat everything that's bad for me now. And really, it's not about that. Every Every meal is an opportunity mm -hmm. to make a good choice mm -hmm. and to give your body the nutrition that it needs. Okay, so <clears throat> for different body types or for between men and women, uh -huh. is dieting the same across the board or is it different? So as far as men and women are concerned, not really. I mean, you know, maybe portion size might be different there. 
Um, the main difference between uh, you know different body types is actually what kind of metabolism you have. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times you may not be aware of it. Um, I do specialized lab testing to better understand somebody's metabolism. But if you have a history of diabetes in your family or polycystic ovarian syndrome or you know some of these uh, things where there's some problems. Mm -hmm with their metabolism, uh, like something called insulin resistance, which I talk a lot about with my patients, then those people do have to be more aware of how much sugar and carbohydrates they're getting in their diet. And also, um, they might need additional um, medication or medical care that's going to help address that problem if they're trying to lose weight and not really getting to where they want to be with mm -hmm. their lifestyle change. You know, I just want everyone to see this. Mm -hmm. The longer the shelf life, the shorter yours. And I love this because we just had this whole conversation about how we all grew up on Twinkies and the yes. Little Debbies and yes. um, the, those brownie cupcakes, what were they called? Ho-Hos, Ding Dongs. The Ding Dongs, the yep. Ho-Hos. And I think it was in all of our lunches. <laughs> It's you know when we, were, when we were little <laughs> yeah. and you made such a great comment that you said when you go to the grocery store you have to shop in in the in the the periphery the, per, the yep. periphery shop the periphery and then you're just kind of skipping over the middle you skip over the middle because yep. you probably don't need most of the stuff that's in the middle that's right so I, I thought that's that was right. very interesting and when you think about it everything fresh is in the peripheral yep so that's really amazing yeah yeah, so I mean, that just kind of makes me not want to go in there in the middle. It makes me not want to go grocery shopping. You can shopping. also just, you know, Instacart, Kroger click list if you really feel like you can't <laughs> avoid the middle when you go in. <laughs> That's an option. Yeah, I, I think that was really, um, I never really thought about that. You know, mm -hmm. you said so many of the obvious things to me. And now that we talked about avocados, I pulled, I took this picture off your Instagram and it was it's with um, swall nuts. Yep. And it's, uh, Tomato, bell peppers, tomatoes, basil. It was kind of like one of my after workout snacks that I was trying to figure out what to get. And I wanted to put something together. I'm uh, pretty quick about just taking what's in my refrigerator and trying to turn it into something. So those are the things I had and it turned out to be a really uh, delicious snack. And um, again, it had fiber, it had fat, it had some tomatoes in it for that additional boost of energy after working out. And I like my food to taste good. I don't know about you. And so this one was reminiscent of kind of like a caprese flavor with the basil. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm into presentation. Yeah. And so, you know, I would love to, at our next Silk Threads event, maybe, you know how you took the avocado and you actually scooped everything out right. and you put it right back in the avocado half. Right. I love that. The presentation was amazing. It looks yeah. so yummy, and I know it is. Thanks. When it was kind of creative and fun. Yes. <laughs> You're hired. <Yay. laughs> Okay, so I wrote down a couple of questions that I have for you. Sure. And I want to talk about them. Um, so, all right, here's here's a, a, a very common question, I mm -hmm. guess, is that is, you know, whatever I, diet I do, I pass it on to everyone. Um, and, you know, I had asked you specifically, and I, and I, I want to know a little bit more. Okay. So, you know, when men come into my studio, their problems are different than women. So women come in and they just want to overall just lose a lot of weight before they have their alterations done because the wedding's not for three months. Then when guys come in, 99% of the guys come in and all they have is a tummy. Mm -hmm. The rest of their body is, say, they're a size 42 regular or a size 44 regular or whatever size they are, but it doesn't fit from the stomach. Right. So is there something special that I need to tell my guys? hey, why don't you do this before we do the alteration? Have them call me, <laughs> and I will evaluate them. Um, yeah, that's actually a really great point you bring up, because abdominal weight is not the same as the weight we carry anywhere else mm -hmm. on our body. And so abdominal weight, or you know, in my patients, I monitor waist size, mm -hmm. because actually, um, and especially for our South Asian population, which most of them are probably South Asian who mm -hmm. might be coming in to get checked, is that they are actually showing signs of potentially what's called insulin resistance, meaning they are their body is basically getting overwhelmed by the food that they're eating and starting to store fat um, around the organs, which is our fat called visceral fat. And the higher amount of fat that we have in our abdominal area, the higher risk of developing diabetes and then all the other you know, complications like stroke and heart attack that can result over time if it's not reversed. So this happens to men, I think, more than women for um, whatever reason. We, we see it in both, but I, I 
I do see that type of body more in men than I do in women. But I think because women have more fat content to begin with, we, are, we already have fat in other parts of our body. So it just may not be as obvious, but actually if you took your tape measure and started measuring people's waist, um, especially in the South Asian population, a waist size over 31 inches in women is considered to be at risk, and over 36 inches in men. Okay, that is so interesting. Yeah, I'll remember that. Yeah. So you know, for uh, speaking of South Asians, mm -hmm. um, whenever I you know I advise them on their diet, I always tell them they can eat the tandoori chicken, or they can eat um, garbanzo beans because you know we we call it chole and we right. make it sort of Indian style because I know it's high in protein um, because there are people who don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. So for vegetarians. Um, who are not getting the protein that they need, what, what do you advise for them? Sure, so most people are probably getting enough protein, but actually it's that they're not getting all the other things that we talked about. Okay. But um, I w you are right that it's easier for people who eat meat to get their protein. Mm -hmm. However, I became a vegetarian seven years ago, so mm -hmm. I've been pretty cognizant of how to try to get protein in my diet. And one of the things that you recommended was true, that garbanzo beans have protein. Mm -hmm. Other sources are other beans, lentils, yogurt. Mostly Greek yogurt is actually a better option uh -huh. because it's higher in protein, it's lower in sugar. Um, but it is important to remember that the garbanzo beans are actually three to one carb to protein. So oh. actually they do have carbs and they have fiber, mm -hmm. which is fine, but that's why we perhaps don't need to have rice every time we have the, the because you're getting the enough carbs in you the garbanzo are, beans or the but, chole. But yes. adding that broccoli and zucchini that you love so much on the side could be a great alternative to the rice because you're actually filling up with fiber then. Well, you know, one thing I want to tell you is I went through your Instagram page and I really want to see more, um, more recipes, more things that we can eat. Um, sure. what I, what, one thing that was very interesting was um, the jackfruit. Mm -hmm. So jackfruit, you said, kind of has a texture of chicken. Right. I have never eaten jackfruit before, but I've been thinking about it. It's so interesting. Yeah. Where do you get jackfruit? What does it look like? And how do you make it? Sure. So I actually had jackfruit when I first lived in India, and my mom made it very well. However, I couldn't quite, you know, replicate what she did. So one day I went to the Indian store and in the freezer section. So I have a little thing against canned food if mm -hmm. possible. I, mm -hmm. I try to avoid it. So in the Indian store in the freezer section, they have jackfruit and it's already um, separated. So it's kind of a fruit that you ha or a vegetable that you have to work at to separate. So I get the frozen version. I brought it home. I had some chutney that I had made, which is basically cilantro, lime, um, hing, you know, a few uh, spices, lemon juice, and I actually put that into the jackfruit after I sauteed it. And boom, you have your potential taco filling, you could, you know, eat it with, um, with some nuts in it to All kind right. of create a full meal. So I'm going to try that. It's, it's actually really cool, and it does have the texture and appearance of chicken. So, you know, before we wrap up, I just want to ask you a personal question. Sure. So, you know, you're, you've been a doctor and you, you told me your whole history and it was so impressive and you're a typical doctor. So tell me, you know, I know this is your passion. You started this business and you're now a woman entrepreneur. I am. So <laughs> what is it? I want to know specifically like one thing that you didn't know how to do that you totally had to learn on your own. I would say social media it has been an interesting skill to learn. I, I feel like I always enjoyed being in front of people and speaking because I love to teach and I'm very passionate about people understanding why they're doing what they're doing and why should they follow the recommendations that I'm making. But yes, one of the things that I had to learn was kind of being out there a little bit more, you know, as doctors we're used to being one-on-one -on -one with our patients um, and I was very comfortable with that setting. But actually being out there and, you know, talking to people and, uh, you know, really selling yourself in a way is kind of a unique uh, skill, but also a, a different type of setting than I've had to be in in the past. So that's been uh, an interesting but learning experience. And, and I love the fact that I'm challenging myself and, and I'm learning new things, which is always exciting. So I guess they don't teach you social media in medical school. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you know, I will tell you one thing that we do at Silk Threads, and it's just a suggestion for you. Uh -huh. um, we are, because we have customers in 35 states, and wow. our, our collection has to actually be seen. 
Um, we do a lot of videos, but we also do a lot of FaceTime with our clients. Okay. So your location is in Frisco, right? Um, which I think is very hip and happening right now. Everybody's moving into Frisco. It's you know 20 minutes from my studio in Carrollton. It's um, 10 minutes from Plano, mm -hmm. 25 minutes from downtown. Great location, but my big suggestion to you, Dr. Mithal, is <laughs> that maybe you should start taking phone appointments and doing FaceTime appointments with clients that are maybe in Arlington or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, because maybe I lived, live in Austin and I heard about you and I found you so fascinating yesterday that I just went way over time. Uh, because everything that you had to say was so interesting and if I wanted to get a, an official appointment with you maybe I couldn't come and see you but if we did a FaceTime together I would be happy to do that so I actually have capability to do telemedicine I do prefer to see you one time in the beginning at right. least and then of course depending on what's going on from a medical standpoint mm -hmm. I may need to see you sooner but otherwise I'd be happy to offer those um, securely as, um, <laughs> as in the medical field we can't quite use FaceTime but yes that's definitely great advice and I'll definitely be happy to offer that. So please tell our audience um, sure. your your Instagram handle, your Facebook, how to get a hold of you um, because I would love for everyone and anyone who's watching this and is really looking for advice on changing the lifestyle where you can go because I really, I mean my attention is five minutes and you kept me on my toes and listening to every single word and I was taking it all in for a good one hour. So please tell everyone. Sure. So my practice is located in Frisco, and uh, the website is RadiantHealthDallas.com. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at RadiantHealthDallas. And um, like I said, I'm happy to always talk to people, and I do 15-minute consultations either, even in person for free just so that people can quite, uh, come in and basically get to know me and better understand what they're going to get when they come to see me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show with me. Thank you for having and me. And we definitely have to do another session uh, because sure. I want everyone to know about omega-3 and omega-6 and which fish and which meat to eat and which to not eat. So definitely we will um, have to do this again. Sure. And thank you everyone for watching and listening. And I hope that this was a very educational uh, episode for you and that you learned something amazing. And if you need me, I'm at silkthreads.com. And if you need Richa, you, you know, we're putting it on the screen and we will put it on um, our page. And please contact her because she is not only beautiful, but very, very intelligent and has the best body for her, oh. our age group that I've ever <laughs> seen. So thank you again. And we will see you in two weeks next Thursday. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Design Your Life. If this episode sparked an idea or a question, I'd love to hear it. Send me a message to my Facebook page, Silk Threads by Ruby Bandari, or you can email me at info at silkthreads.com. You may be featured on an upcoming episode.